There's a common misconception out there when one hears the word audiophile, unless you know you're one already, I'll bet that when I just said that word, your brain immediately popped in other words like these. But what if I told you that kind of mindset doesn't have to perpetuate any longer, largely thanks to advancements in tech, materials, and economies of scale, that you, my dear viewers, can finally enjoy much of what the audiophile world has to offer for, get this, $110. Yes, 110 bucks. This is the Hi-Fi Man HE400SE, or the box for it anyway. And this is an entry-level planar magnetic headphone, and this key here, from one of the best known audio makers out there right now. So let's do this video and find out if this is dope or nope. After these messages. <laughs> The Hi-Fi Man HE400SE runs $110, and I'll link it down below in case you're interested in getting one. It comes in only one color scheme, but it is one of the cheapest ways to get into a planar magnetic open back circum oral headphone. And what that means is basically, well, a headphone that sits around your ears designed specifically for your listening pleasure. For music, for movies, for gaming, that's its only job. There's no tech for you to worry about, no Bluetooth, active noise cancellation, none of that crap, charging times. There's not even buttons or batteries to worry about here. It's just you, the comfort of the headphone, and the driver. And speaking of the driver, this is not your conventional dish shape or cone shaped driver that you're used to imagining or seeing. Well, let me shine a flashlight behind you so you can see that. So that vertical slat right there, that in essence is a planar magnetic setup. And I talk more about the tech in my unboxing video up above in case you're interested. And in terms of sound quality, oh yes, we're gonna be talking more, much more about this later on in the episode. Around the bottom of the headphone is a double-sided 3.5 millimeter output port for the left and right. And it's connected to an included cable that's really nice. It's five feet long right here included in the box. If you buy one that has a white or translucent cable, call Hi-Fi Man and they'll send you this updated one because the old one kind of sucks. And this one, I'm not sure what the right term is, is I think it's microphobic or something. If you rub against the cable, it doesn't transmit sound into the headphone, which is really, really nice. Um, in terms of weight, this thing is 390 grams, a little bit on the heavy side, but the weight distribution is pretty darn awesome. Thanks to the generous padding on the head right here, the headband, oh, look at that, so thick. And the foam padding right here is really generous. And if you think this felt is warm, it can be against the skin, but because this is open back, it lets air through, it breathes really well. The build quality is, well, decent for $110. It looks good. But if you look closely, there are parts where like here and around the wishbone hinge right here is a little bit sharp around the corners. I wish that chamfered this a little bit more in the aluminum. Uh, there's plastics for this casing, metal grill right here. Uh, and the, as I mentioned, the foam padding is really generous. And here also you can see around the uh, output port, the sound port, there's some cracks or little chips here and there. So you can see once you really pay attention, the build quality is just okay. One thing I didn't notice until just now, right here on the bottom, the wishbone, I'm not sure if you can see that, there's a little uh, stamped message, right? stamped wording right there. It says Stealth Magnets. It's a little bit of an advertisement for their planar magnetic tech right there. Uh, the ear cups, in terms of pivoting, the only thing it does is a little bit of this vertical twisting, just a bit, and a lot of this. I'm not sure what this is for, maybe to cook burgers. I'm not sure, or just lay it flat like this. Uh, but it's definitely uh, not gonna fold down really compact uh, for traveling. And speaking of traveling, this doesn't come with a case either. Moving up to the headband, we have the slider. This thing is a little bit stiff and really hard to maneuver, but at least once you find the right fit for your skull, you don't have to bother with it too much. There's plenty of detents. Uh, the plastics here, I wish this was better, but it's $110. Stitching for the headband is also nice and solid. Plenty of padding, as we mentioned earlier. There's left-right indicators. You can see there in both corners. I wish this was more high-vis in low light or something like that, or by feel, I can know which is left, which is right. And from the top view, you can see that the ear pads are tapered inwards, right? This is a narrower and this is taller. This is to fit the shape of your skull. So there's some ergonomic thought going into that. That's really nice. Uh, and that's overall the build quality and how this thing looks. One thing I want to quickly mention about these headphones is that they're really easy to DIY or mod. Um, you can 3D print different parts for it. You can change out even this cap right here for wood if you want to. And if you want to expand things like the soundstage and the bass response, I've been told that if you pop off the grill like this, all you need is a really thin screwdriver, pop off the ring, and then the grill slides off to expose the whole, you know, you can see this better, the planar magnetic unit 
right there. It exposes the whole thing, but allows for a wider soundstage and better bass response. Of course, do this at your own risk, but that's the cool part about these kind of headphones. They're easy to work on if you want to. I can almost guarantee that all you need is to spend like the first minute or two with these things on and you regret not going out to buy these any sooner. It's really that good. And if you remember my unboxing, I had to pick myself off the floor due to the amount of information these 400 SEs were sending to my rather limited brain cells. Small details and nuances that I thought I had already discovered on top end headphones like, you know, the Sony XM series or Bose's were actually still there for me to discover. That's how good this thing is. And that's really the point, isn't it? The strength of planar magnetic drivers is that they resolve finer details of a recording with speed and precision. That's how the tech works. Percussion instruments like pianos and snares have realistic timber while being snappy and responsive at the same time. The mid-range is strong, especially with male and contralto voices. As I mentioned before, it's very chill and smooth. Although in the upper mid-range is where we have the usual hi-fi man dip. I think it's like 1K between 1K and 3K, which causes like high-pitched voices and instruments to feel a little restrained. Still, I think it's a smart tuning choice because that makes things less fatiguing and more pleasing in the long run. Now, arguably the best part of these headphones though is the treble. With most songs, especially, you know, on well-recorded ones, the drivers offer a buttload of playful energy and articulation without getting distorted at higher volumes. The overall feeling I get whenever I have these on is sublime. That's the word that keeps popping out. Now, if there is one weak spot, it would be sub bass or the lowest regions of the bass frequency. Each thump of the drum or the lowest notes of a bass guitar, for example, do sound satisfying, let's get that straight, but the rumble that you're supposed to feel right here is kind of lacking. But that being said, another great thing about the 400 SE is that the bass can be easily tweaked back in with an EQ, or when you pair it with something like a hit back 2, the bass really comes alive with little to no detriment to the mids or the highs. Another thing I want to add is about staging and imaging. The latter, I'll tell you what, is spot on. I know where each instrument and singer is placed in the recording studio. And the nature of planar drivers here also allows each instrument or voice to be distinct from each other and never seem to clash. It's really quite uncanny. And in terms of staging though, I do wish it was a tad bit wider straight out of the box because as it is, the Mac soundstage sits just right outside my skull. Now, one last thing about SQ that's quite important is that with a relatively low impedance, I think it's around 29 ohms and a decent sensitivity, you can play these headphones decently loud on your phone, which you can't say the same for even higher priced models out there. Now, if you plug this into a decent amp like this thing or a sound card, you're gonna get a whole lot more out of these drivers. But that's another story for another day. The generous padding up top and around the ears here are decently soft and comfortable. And as we saw earlier, the ear pads are also ergonomically tapered to match the angle of my skull, which when you combine with the padding, gives me like a chance to keep these on my head for long listening sessions. If I were to nitpick though, it would be this specific pressure point right here in the center of the headband. It starts bothering me maybe after a couple of hours, although that's easily resolved when I lift it off my head for like literally a second and then back on again. That serves like a quick reset. You know, I'm still wondering how this kind of price to performance quotient even exists, but yet here it is. It's really hard to beat. $110 again? Seriously? In quite literally a second, you might be wondering why I have something like sound leakage in the negatives. It's an open back headphone for crying out loud, Aaron. That's a feature. That's how it's supposed to work. Well, unfortunately, that very same feature will also cause people around you to stare at you incredulously, wondering why you even bother wearing a headphone in the first place when they can hear everything you're listening to from four feet away. This is very much an anti-social device, guys, just so you know, because when you have these on, people start treating you like one of those jerks on the bus, you know, who listen to music way too loud on your headphones. Just a fair warning. Which brings me to the next negative. If you really want to enjoy your tunes with the Hi-Fi Man, you know, like channeling your inner audiophilic existence, you need a dedicated quiet space, you know, like some far corner of your house or a quiet room. And that's the reality of being open back because outside noises like right now out there easily alter the listening experience. So something to bear in mind. Thumbs down to the headphone slider on this thing. It's one of, if not the stiffest sliding sliders I've ever tested ever say that five times really fast. 
Every time I try to make an adjustment on this thing, which thank goodness isn't often, it reminds me what it must be like having sex at 80 years old. The shaft always needs more lubricant. <laughs> Sorry, my geriatric viewers. <laughs> It is quite clear, the biggest selling point of these headphones is the sound quality. In this area, the positives easily outweigh the negatives. Guys, listen to me, the 400SE presents all spectrums of the sound range with such technical liveliness and clarity and all-round performance that it makes you wonder how Hi-Fi Man can offer a planar magnetic device at this price for a profit. 110 bucks retail is like a steal. And honestly, I think it's a crime to call this an entry-level device as well. And sure, the build quality is just okay, and you may, you may need an amp to truly excite the planar drivers, but as it is, straight out of the box, this thing offers very good value for money, and it's perfect for those of you looking for a very good open headphone, period. So with all that said, I'm giving the Hi-Fi Man HE 400SE a gear up score of 8.4 out of 10. And this is how I broke it down to get the final score. If you have any questions about how I got there, feel free to comment down below. And if you're wondering why 8.4, why is it so low? Well, it's only because of the materials and the workmanship. Otherwise, this would have been in the nines. Well, that's it for my review of the 400SE from Hi-Fi Man. It's really an awesome device, and I hope you enjoyed this video, but remember to go out there and watch other reviewers too, because they might have covered stuff that I haven't. So all together, watch them all before you buy one of these. And if you'd like to see more videos from this channel, please share it with your friends and family. Subscribe to this, hit the bell icon, get me to 50,000 subs. Visit my Patreon page as well if you'd like to help in some other way, and thumbs up if you like this video too, and comment nicely down below. And thumbs down. Hmm. <clears throat> Thumbs down. Well, this one's a heavy one, guys, because, yeah, this happened last night. But thumbs down to children dying unnecessarily. If you've read the news, they're dropping like flies from everything. Wars, diseases, abuses, shootings, accidents. It's just not cool. And we found out last night that one of our foster babies died in another home unexpectedly. She didn't even get to see her second birthday. So thumbs down to unnecessary and avoidable deaths. Aloy, little O, we'll miss you very much. Um, yeah. Well, remember to do something loving and kind, guys, out there in the world, because guess what? The world needs it more than ever, and it starts with you. I love you all very much. Peace out.